did you pick up the cookies? Yes. Did you get the fruit tray? I found it on the coffee table. Did you get the hot chocolate and the coffee cake cups? Yes, but we only have plain cream. What? No pumpkin spice? I better add that to the list. I ordered the cake for Jesus. Good job. It is his birthday after all. Is everything ready for the party? Just about. Great. The choir should be finishing soon, and the best will bring them home to us in our party game again. <laughs> I wonder what's on the play now. Hey guys, it's time to go home to our families and Christmas parties.
Looks like we're all set. They should be back here any minute. Now we can get this party started. <laughs> what do you mean you ran out of grass? I thought you filled the bus this morning. Are you okay? All right, we'll see you when we get here then. Bye. What happened? The, apparently, Brother and Aaron thought Brother Andy put gas in us, and Brother Andy thought Brother Aaron put gas in us. So nobody filled the gas this morning. Now they're stuck and stranded on the side of the road. Did they call for help? Someone from the church is bringing them gas, but it's going to take a lot longer for them to get home. This is terrible. The party is ruined. How depressing. <laughs> this is so depressing. Don't go here in the cold when we should be at our Christmas party. What rotten luck. We prayed in one of it wouldn't snow, but I guess we should have also prayed for someone to put gas in the bus. Come on, guys. It's not that bad. Oh, sure it is. No presents, no food, freezing cold, getting dark, it's the definition of that. All we want for Christmas is to go home. No, wait, and have presents. We definitely still want presents. And food. And hot chocolate. And, and our party. Whining about it isn't gonna get us home to our Christmas parties any faster. At the rate this holiday is going, we might as well cancel Christmas altogether. I would cancel Christmas if I can't We'll get here soon, and then we'll be heading home to our parties, our presents, and even our hot chocolate. Remember when we sing so bright Christmas? We sing about it earlier, Jesus' birth. Remember why we're having these Christmas parties at all? We played all about it in our concert. Jesus came to be our Savior, and that's why we celebrate Christmas. Christmas isn't about going my way. Christmas isn't about focusing on ourselves. Christmas, Christmas is the time to praise the Lord. Thank you. 
wonderful. We'll see you when you get here then. Bye. The guests arrived and they're on their way. Yay! Yay! They'll be here any minute now. And everyone pray the Lord for taking care of them.
amen. What a blessing that was. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and uh, get, get them out at this time. Look with me to the book of Luke in chapter 1. Luke in chapter 1. The young people did a great job tonight. Praise the Lord for their presentation and uh, the message of that. Christmas is not all about giving gifts and parties and making sure you have gas in the bus. But uh, it is the time to acknowledge the virgin-born Son of God. The coming of the virgin-born Son of God. Luke chapter 1, we're going to start reading down, down to verse 26. And we'll read all the way down to verse 47. The Bible says, In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutations this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. For thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit doth hath rejoiced in God my Savior. And let's pray. Father, we bow before you. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessing of being here tonight for the children and, uh, Lord, their hard work and their presentation of what Christmas is all about. And I pray even now as we've read this passage of Scripture, God, that you'd help us to stay focused on this passage and how it can impact our lives. How that understanding this can bring joy into our own lives. Pray that you would empower the preaching of thy word once again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. In verse 47, the Bible says, And Mary said, And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. I'd like to just spend a couple minutes in preaching and teaching on this passage of Scripture with this in mind. Faith to believe in who Jesus is will bring joy to our lives. Faith to believe in who Jesus is will bring joy to our lives. 
Any true believer, if you have faith to believe, you can experience joy at any time. No matter what you're going through. No matter what you're faced with. If you turn to your belief in Jesus Christ and focus on your belief in him and the reality of Christ, it can bring joy into your heart. We find here that Mary was a godly young woman, a virgin who was getting ready for her marriage to Joseph. No doubt she had been raised in a Jewish home. She had been raised in understanding Old Testament prophecy. She was familiar with the promise of the Messiah. She had no indication as far as we know. There's nothing else that would help us to see that she would have known that this was going to happen to her. She did not. She was ready to marry Joseph. And in preparation to marry Joseph, we find our text here tonight. In verse 28, the Bible says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. <laughs> now the reality is that some 2,000 years ago, Mary was there in Jerusalem. And this angel of the Lord came to her before she was ready to be married to Joseph. She had, like any other girl, been looking forward to her marriage with Joseph. She had been, no doubt, looking forward to establishing a good Jewish home and teaching the, the words of God, the commandments of the Old Testament. Little did she know that God would use her to usher in New Testament Christianity. She did not understand to start with. We find the angel come to her and he says, Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Why in the world am I experiencing what I'm experiencing right now? And hearing the voice of an angel telling me that I am blessed amongst women. He goes on to explain to her exactly what God has chosen her to do. Almighty God has chosen her to be the one in whom the only begotten Son of God would be brought into this world. Wow. <laughs> I mean, put yourselves there, ladies. <laughs> the reality of the angel telling Mary that she was called of God, highly favored of the Lord, and that she would bring forth as a virgin the only begotten Son of God. Verse 38, we find the Bible says, after this was explained to her by the angels, and Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word. Now, I love that because that shows just the, the faith and the genuine belief in Mary and knowing that this was prophesied, knowing this was going to happen, but still rather confused that she would be the one chosen, the humility of that. Mary yields to God's will. But in yielding to God's will, she's still feeling possibly a little troubled, as when the angel first came to her. She might have still been feeling a little bit uncertain, wondering, because the angel now has departed, and she's probably wondering, was that a dream? Did that just happen? <laughs> and then she remembers the angel told her, in verse 36 and verse 37, and behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she also hath also conceived a son in her old age, and we would know him to be John the Baptist. And she has conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. 
So now the angel has gone, but yet he left her this message knowing that she would go to see her to confirm what, that this is real. The angel was no longer there, but we know that she knew where Elizabeth lived. And we find that she left. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into the city of Judah. Now, she went because she needs confirmation. She had just met with the angel of God, and she heard things that she never expected to hear, to hear what was going to take place in her life, that she would be chosen of God to bring forth the Messiah. She goes and she enters the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. The Bible says in verse 41, And it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe, John the Baptist, (laughs) inside the womb of Elizabeth, The babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. Now she's speaking to Mary. Now Mary just heard that she has this child inside of her that was of the Holy Ghost, that would be the mm, Messiah. She's not showing There's no way Elizabeth could have known that she was conceived, she had conceived, and she was bearing a child. Mary knew exactly what was taking place, and she goes, and and we find here that the Spirit of God actually spoke to John the Baptist inside the womb of Elizabeth, and then he allows Elizabeth to cry out and to reveal to Mary what she had just been told. And when... Whence is this to be that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? I love that too. She says, you're the chosen one. And you're carrying my Lord. You're carrying my Savior. You're carrying the only begotten Son of God. And you come to visit me. At that point, and Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. At that point, she understood and she had faith to believe. Who Jesus was. And that he was (laughs) inside of her womb. And then the Bible says that she said, and my spirit hath rejoiced. There was joy that came over her like she had never experienced before. Not only because she knew that that she was chosen of God, but she knew that Jesus was real. She knew that Jesus, the Messiah, was coming. He was coming to fulfill the Old Testament prophecies. And she would be the one, the vessel, in whom God would choose to bring forth this babe. Her faith was where it needed to be concerning who Jesus was and her joy. Overcome all her fears. The joy of knowing that Jesus is my Savior, is my Lord. The knowing, the faith to know that Jesus is God. The faith to know that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. The joy of knowing Him will overcome all of our fears. Not only will it overcome our fears that we might have in this life, but it will also overcome all the circumstances that I have to face in life. No matter what I have to face in life, if I have the confidence of my faith in Jesus Christ being real, 
To know that he's my savior, to know that he's God, to know that he's creator of all things, to know that he will never leave me nor forsake me, to have all the promises that he gives. It will give you a joy in the midst of any of your fears. It'll give you a joy in the midst of any of your circumstances if you have faith to believe and who he truly is. She would have to have been thinking about her family, knowing they, wouldn't, they couldn't believe it. <laughs> What's my family going to think? They know that I have not been married yet, and yet I am with child. But in her mind, she thought, <laughs> if God's able to plant the seed of the Messiah inside of me, he can take care of my family. He can help them to understand whatever they need to understand. I don't have to fear what my family is going to think. I don't have to be concerned about my, what my family is going to do. My God, he is almighty God. If he can do this, he can take care of any of my problems. She had to think about Joseph. No doubt, I mean, she had to go and present to Joseph in her mind that Joseph, I'm with child, but I've not known a man. Reality, that's something that no one's going to believe. Outside, they understand and have faith in God. And understand that it was prophesied and there would be someone, some woman, some virgin that would bring forth this child. That was the prophecy of the Old Testament. And she would be the one. With her faith to know that she was chosen and she was the one, then she would have to just turn Joseph over to another angel that would go and prepare him for what God's plan was for him in, this, in the midst of this. She would have to prepare and think about her mother-in-law. <laughs> if there's one skeptic, it would have to be Joseph's mother. She wouldn't have fear because the joy of having faith to believe would overcome her fears. The joy to have faith to believe would overcome her circumstances. Faith to believe who Jesus is will bring joy. Now, I love that. And then just a couple more minutes, I want to share something with you and Another example that God gives us of this very same thing, but this presents more of what it's going to take for all of us to have this same faith and the joy that's associated with our faith to believe in Jesus Christ. In the book of Acts, in chapter 8, in the book of Acts, in chapter 8, we find the story of the Ethiopian eunuch. This Ethiopian eunuch was searching for spiritual truth. And the Bible says in verse 30, and Philip ran thither unto him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I? Except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The man was searching. He had a Bible. He had what God had revealed to us, Old Testament scriptures here. And he was wanting to understand spiritual truth, possibly of who God is and God's plan for humanity and God's plan for heaven. Well, Jesus had already sent Philip to preach to him. And Philip preached unto him Jesus in verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth, began at the same scripture. He was at, he was at the right place in Isaiah. He was at the right place in scripture. He just couldn't understand it. He needed someone to help him to understand the interpretation of the wor very words of God. He believed them to be the words of God. He just needed help understanding. 
And God sent him a preacher. And Philip started at that scripture. This would have been Old Testament and preached unto him Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Verse 36, and as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Possibly had heard of John the Baptist. Maybe that's why he was there. He come all the way because he had heard of something taking place with John the Baptist, the one who introduced water baptism to humanity. They thought about baptism, as many will try to think of baptism as far as God's plan of salvation. But he didn't fully understand it. But we find here that Philip knew exactly what he needed to hear. And verse 37 is, was then and is now the key to salvation. In verse 37, and Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Because it takes a believer to have biblical baptism. And he answered and said, and this is the, what he responded to by the preaching of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <laughs> now, I love that because that's exactly what took place. As he, he, he was searching, he had, something was missing in his life. And what was missing in his life was faith to believe in Jesus Christ. And without faith to believe in Jesus Christ, there is a lack of joy. But he believed in the Old Testament prophecies of the coming of the Messiah. He believed that Jesus would have come and paid his sin debt on Calvary's cross. He believed that Jesus would have been virgin born. He believed that Jesus, not only would he have sacrificed his life to pay a sin that humanity owed and couldn't pay, but he resurrected on the third day. And the baptism was established so that he could identify with his Savior, Jesus Christ. In the book of Romans in chapter 10, Romans in chapter 10, verse 9 that if thou, whoever that would be, that was me at one point in my life. If you're saved, it was you at one point in your life. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, it could be tonight. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus And shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And after he was baptized, the Bible says in verse 39, and when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he, the eunuch, went on his way rejoicing. I love that the Bible puts that in there because it's helping us to see what Mary saw. If we have faith to believe in who Jesus is, it'll bring us joy in the midst of any and every circumstance of life. Do you have faith? If your eyes were to close in death tonight, do you know for sure that you have faith to believe and you have received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? As you go home to face whatever you have to go home to face tonight, as you have to go out into the world tomorrow, as you have to deal with your finances, as you, have you, as you have to deal with your health, as you have to deal with relationships, whatever it might be, 
Do you have joy? If you, if you have faith to believe in who Jesus is, as you face all the circumstances of your life, you can have the joy of the Lord made available to us by way of Jesus Christ. If I could have every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. Faith to believe in who Jesus is. Are you looking for something that will bring joy to your life? Look no farther than Jesus Christ. Put your faith and trust in him. It'll make a difference. Father, we bow before you tonight. Again, we thank you for what we've experienced being in this service tonight. Thank you for the children and their program. But I thank you more than anything else for the very words of God that you've preserved for us. That we might read and study and preach the words that you have preserved. I pray tonight, God, that as we have presented these scriptures, that you would take this and you would apply them to each and every one that's here tonight so that before we leave, that we would all be able to experience the joy of our faith in knowing who Jesus is. Blessing this invitation in Jesus' name.